Hello viewers, this is Ranjana ma'am and you are watching, yes, mine as well as your channel. My channel why? Because I am here to teach and your channel why? Because you are here to view it. And uh, as I have been getting a quite, uh, getting quite a few requests because of the lockdown, many of you are affected. And you all keep on asking me, ma'am, we need this one and we need that one. So naturally, it's your channel too. At the same time, I would like to tell you that yes, this time it is for my ISC students. ICSC students don't feel dejected. Why? Because your literature syllabus all the videos have been completed. What needs is some exercises and how to frame your answers. That I'll do in the subsequent ones. But for this time, it is my ISC students. And yes, it is B Wordsworth. Because two chapters remain. One is the sound machine and the other is the one, uh, other is B Wordsworth. Many of you might be thinking B. Wordsworth has come this time in 2020. So why? But this time you never know. The questions might be repeated. Because they have cut one chapter from prose to build a fire. And then one from poem. Birches. So there are only nine. So repetition cannot be ruled out whether it is 2019 or 2020, because you are left with four. So in that case, there may be a repetition. Don't expect that out of the four, you are going to get three. Don't be so optimistic. So there are every chances of the chapters which have come, every chances of their being repeated. So it is in the syllabus and you have to do it. You can be selective. You never know. I you see they like they like playing games. So anyway, without wasting any more time, let's go back to it. And yes, you know what's coming before we start. Have you subscribed to my channel? If not, please do. And don't forget to press the like button after you have seen the video. And I'm sure you'll like it. So let's do with B words for. B word set is quite interesting. You love it. It's not boring like to build a fire. I don't know. I never liked that chapter. So let's start with it. So the background is actually uh, VS Naipaul's most of uh, the stories. They have the background of hmm, Port of Spain, Tinidad. So West Indies rather. So I always say that first read the box. So page 115. It is this one is from the ex, uh, from a novel Miguel Street. This is an extract. So Miguel Street is a semi autobiographical novel that focuses on the characters living on Miguel Street. And where is it? A poor neighborhood set in wartime port of Spain, Trinidad. The story is narrated by a precocious and keenly observant boy who recounts the myriad lives of quirky inhabitants of his neighborhood in a witty yet innocent way. Yeah, a young boy. In this story also, he's the main protagonist. Though B. Wordsworth is of course there, but the boy as the narrator, he also shares the screen with B. Wordsworth. And, uh, so there are also tones of deep humor and there is also a sort of sadness. Why? Because of the tragic nature of the lives of, the mo of most characters. B. Wordsworth is, is the story of one of those characters. So now let's see. And in this story, you'll find English quite faulty. So don't think it's the author whose fault. No, he is a versatile man. The author is a very learned man. Don't have any wrong uh, 
opinion about him those lines which are faulty in english which are incorrect he has deliberately used them because you can't expect the lower middle class people or rather lower class people speaking perfect english and you will enjoy the language so b words were now the narrator as i said is a young boy and he starts the story three beggars call punctually every day at the hospitable houses in migo street so every day three beggars would come and each had a particular time at about 10 an indian came in his dhoti and white jacket and we poured a tin of rice into the sack he carried on his back so this man came with a sack and what did the narrator's mother do she poured a tin of rice so the first one gets quite a lavish uh treatment he gets a tin of rice acha after this see the second one is not so lucky so after 10 hours later at 12 an old woman smoking a pipe came and she got a scent this time no rice this time scent scent is Uh, not really a very good amount of money but yet they are hospitable people so she is not refused and thrown out she is also given something so a sin and the last one who called at two again two hours later a blind man led by a boy called for his penny so every day he would get a penny so penny is even lesser than sin so the first one gets the most the second one gets much less and the third one gets the least so penny cent and a tin of rice every day so these people though they are poor uh, they belong to the lower class family and yet they are hospitable sometimes we had a rogue one day a man called and said he was hungry so those rascal sort of fellows we gave him a meal so yeah they don't refuse him they give him a meal he asked for a cigarette and wouldn't go until we had lit it for him so this fellow is a real rogue now he starts demanding give me a cigarette and when he is given the cigarette you will light it and i am not going to leave unless you light it for me so that man never came back so these people they come occasionally they are not the regular visitors like the first three the strangest caller pay attention now the strangest caller came one afternoon at about 4 o'clock i had come back from school and was in my home clothes yeah so he had changed from his school uniform to his home clothes and this time this fellow calls the man said to me sunny may i come inside your yard so yes very decent person asking for permission to enter the yard he was a small man and he was tidily dressed yes neatly dressed so he doesn't fall in the category of the beggars he wore a hat a white shirt and black trousers i asked what do you want see the language is not correct it would it should have been what do you want but excuse him he is a small boy belonging to the poverty stricken people of miguel street so excuse him he said i want to watch your bees this man's english is perfect we had four small gru gru palm leaf palm trees and they were full of uninvited bees So yes if you have a garden you'll know that without inviting the bees also like some people they go for bee party yeah but if you have a garden many times they'll come uninvited and then you'll have the honeycomb we had a garden when i was small and naturally there were times and they were at times a menace also so uninvited bees i ran up the steps and shouted ma it have a man outside here actually it should be there is a man outside here so he says it have a man outside here he say he want to watch the bees 
he say it should have been he says but yes excuse him but this gives rise to the humor my mother came out looked at the man so mother is a shrew a bad tempered woman a woman with a nasty temper so she comes out and see her reaction and asked in an unfriendly way what you want again her english is like her son the man said i want to watch your bees he's polite he's decent english perfect his english was so good that it didn't sound natural and i could see my mother was worried when beggars come no problem but when educated people come with their perfect english then there is a concern there is something to worry why has he come she said to me stay here and watch him while he watch the bees so the mother tells the narrator that you keep a watch on him let him watch the bees but you keep a watch on this fellow god knows what nonsense he is up to and educated people are more to be worried about when you should be more worried about them it is not my opinion it's about is the opinion of the narrator's mother she seems quite skeptical the man said thank you madam you have done a good deed today good deed in which way by allowing him to watch the bees he spoke very slowly and very correctly as though every word was costing him money immaculately he while we watch the bees that means the narrator and the man this man and i for about an hour squatting near the palm leaf squatting is a way of sitting when you sit on your haunches on your back you sit like this we call it squatting the man said i like watching bees sunny do you like watching bees i said i ain't have the time yes yeah, so i don't have the time to watch bees he shook his head sadly he said that's what i do i just watch i can watch ants for days have you ever watched ants and scorpions and centipedes and congrees have you watched these those oh my god so it seems he doesn't really have any job to do he has no work in and that is why he can spend hours looking up watching these creatures i shook my head i said what you does do mister what english what do you do mister what you does do mister he got up and said i am a poet i said a good poet he said the greatest in the world so he himself calls he calls himself only the greatest poet what your name mr what is your name mr what your name mr b wordsworth so doesn't that remind us of william wordsworth so he says b wordsworth b for bill so what does b stand for is your name bill wordsworth black black words white wordsworth was my brother so that man his brother must be w wordsworth but not william wordsworth he was white wordsworth so they were two brothers black wordsworth and white wordsworth we share one heart i can watch a small flower like the morning glory and cry so poets are supposed to be a little bit mad uh, they have fant- uh, fantasies and they uh, can go on dreaming and dreaming so the poet the madman and the lover are said to be of imagination compact so i said why you does cry so actually with you we don't use the verb does we use do but you can't expect him to speak proper english so why you does cry why boy why you will know when you grow up you are a poet too you know and when you are a poet you can cry for everything yes poets are emotional creatures and they cry at everything they see so when you grow up you will also understand i couldn't laugh he said you like your mother so he has understood that the mother is a strict person she is a shrew bad tempered woman 
when she not beating me yeah i like my mother when she doesn't beat me that means quite often she must be beating him he pulled out a printed sheet from his hip pocket and said on this paper is the greatest poem for mothers and i am going to sell it to you at a bargain price for 4 cents so the second beggar which came got 1 cent daily then he is going to sell the poem at 4 cents so that's quite a cheap price i would say but what will they do with the poem these people are hardly literate this boy goes to school but the mother is hardly literate i went inside and said ma you want to buy a poetry for 4 cents <laughs> so just see the answer of the mother very funny so she is very annoyed my mother said tell that blasted man to haul his tail away from my yard you hear so she wants that the narrator should tell him to get lost that is a way of saying tell that blasted man to haul his tail as if he is an animal he doesn't have a tail but it's quite a nasty way of telling him to get lost but he can't say that to this man na the narrator so what does he say i said to be worse what my mother say she ain't have four cents now that is a decent way so i can buy the poem because she doesn't have the money b wordsworth said it is the poet's tragedy what is the poet's tragedy no one wants to buy his poems and he put the paper back in his pocket he didn't seem to mind that means he must have faced this refusal again and again so this is nothing new for him so he goes and approaches people they refuse and he puts it back in his pocket i said is a funny way to go around selling poetry like that only calypsonians do that sort of thing a lot of people does buy so the calypsonians they sell calypsos during that particular season and quite a few people buy it money they pay and these calypsonians they sing and dance so this is their way of buy or rather selling themselves or their art he said no one has yet bought a single copy but why you does keep on going around and say if no one has bought even a single copy then why do you keep on going from one house to house asking if someone would buy your poetry he said in this way i watch many things and i always hope to meet poets so he doesn't mind he's not very earnest about selling so if no one buys that doesn't uh, disappoint him why because he has another aim that is to watch things like here he is watching the bees and he gets to meet poet like he calls this boy a poet i said you really think i is a poet again i am a poet but he says do you really think i is a poet you are as good as me a little while ago he had called himself the best poet in the world and now he or the greatest poet in the world and now he is telling this boy that you are as great as me or as good as me and when b wordsworth left i prayed i would see him again so this young boy has developed a fondness for this man b wordsworth yeah, he seems to be quite a charming personality about a week later coming back from school one afternoon i met him at the corner of midway street he said i've been waiting for you for a long time so you know he is clever he knows that the mother would not tolerate him so what does he do in order to meet this boy he is waiting at the corner of midway street he is not at the house he knows the boy will be returning from school through this way so he wishes to catch up with him i said he said i have been waiting for you for a long time i said you sell any poetry yet have you sold any poetry yet he shook his head so that's his tragedy no one buys his poem he said in my yard i have the best mango tree in port of spain he is very fond of talking in superlatives he is the greatest poet the mango tree is the best and now the mangoes are ripe and red and very sweet and juicy i have waited here for you to tell you this and to invite you to come and eat some of my mangoes so yes 
even he has developed a fondness for this boy so he has come to invite this boy to have a taste of his mangoes which according to him are the best in port of spain he lived in alberto street so the narrator lived in miguel street and he lived in alberto street in a one roomed hut placed right in the center of the lot the yard seemed all green there was the big mango tree there was a coconut tree and there was a plum tree so fruit trees big mango tree coconut tree and the plum tree the place looked wild as though it wasn't in the city at all so uh, yes lots of plants and all that trees and plants and not properly maintained a bit neglected so it seemed quite wild you couldn't see all the big concrete houses in the street yes the trees there were so many trees and everything na so you couldn't see beyond them he was right the mangoes were sweet and juicy i ate about six so that means they were so tasty so juicy that he went on eating one after the other so six and the yellow mango juice ran down my arms to my elbows and down my mouth to my chin and my shirt was stained so the school uniform the white shirt stained and so he is late in reaching home and now see what treatment he gets from his mother my mother said when i got home where you was you think you is a man now and could go all over the place go cut me cut a whip for me this is a real tragedy telling the offender only to fetch the weapon for reprimanding so she is telling this boy only to go and cut a whip with which she will beat him she beat me rather badly and i ran out of the house swearing i would never come back so oh, i think she is a, a very cruel woman how can she beat a child so badly so she had beat him so badly that the narrator was really uh, in pain and he warned his mother and in his anger he said i am never going to return i went to be wordsworth house i was so angry my nose was bleeding this is like a, what should we say this is too horrible too horrible b wordsworth said stop crying and we will go for a walk he has a very nice way of handling children and just see within a short time he'll make him forget this incident the anger and everything i stopped crying but i was breathing short yes he was panting we went for a walk we walked down st clair avenue to the savanna and we walked to the race course so when you are walking also some physical activity maybe it will help in reducing your anger you see people around you different things to watch so your attention won't be focused on the anger rather you will be watching all these things and slowly the anger will subside b wordsworth said now let us lie on the grass and look up at the sky and i want you to think how far those stars are from us this is another novel way so let's lie on the ground on the grass and look at the stars i did as he told me and i saw what he meant i felt like nothing yeah in comparison to these stars they are so far away and glittering so what are we and at the same time i had never felt so big and great in my life yeah someone is treating him like a grown up so at home he is being treated like a kid being beaten black and blue i forgot all my anger and my tears and all the blows when i said i was better he began telling me the names of the stars yeah introduction to the star family he introduces this star is called this 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 they all they have a name especially the constellations and i particularly remembered the constellation of orion what is constellation constellation is a group of stars and they form a perfect pattern or some major or some minor they are quite a few seven brothers uh, orion the hunter though i don't really know why i can spot orion even today but i have forgotten the rest then a light was flashed in our faces and we saw a policeman 
So the policeman is of the opinion that they must be up to some nonsense. What are they doing here? We got up from the grass. The policeman said, what you doing here? The policeman's English is also equally good like that of the mother and the narrator. B. Wordsworth said, I have been asking myself the same question for 40 years. What a philosophical answer. Now the policeman feels nice. it's no use troubling them. We became friends, B. Wordsworth and I. He told me, you must never tell anybody about me and about the mango trees and the coconut tree and the plum tree. That means uh, he leads quite an isolated life. He has made this boy his friend and he doesn't want the mother and the others to know. Mother might have an objection. What are you doing with a grown-up man? You must keep that a secret. If you tell anybody, I will know because I am a poet. I gave him my word and I kept it. Yeah, I never told anyone about our secret meeting. I liked his little room. It had no more furniture than George's front room. George is another inhabitant of Miguel Street. He's a young boy and he um, gives newspapers. He delivers newspapers to every house. He's not in this. You won't find him in this story rather. But in I have read in another story I used to teach in ISC. So there I him to know that George also is a part of their boys gang. He's a little older than the narrator and he also delivers newspaper from one house to the other quite poor. But it looked cleaner and healthier but it also looked lonely. One day I asked him, Mr. Wordsworth, why you just keep all this bush in your yard? So his yard is full of bushes. So he's asking, why do you keep all this bush? Ain't it does make the place damp? Yeah, doesn't the place become damp because of all these bushes? Because here the sunlight doesn't reach the ground. He said, listen, and I will tell you a story. He tells it is a story, but it's not a story. It's a fact. Once upon a time, a boy and a girl met each other and they fell in love. They loved each other so much, they got married. They were both poets. Poets doesn't mean that you have to write poems only. Poet can be a person who has love for nature. He can also be a poet like see in this one. He loved words. She loved grass and flowers and trees. In this way, she was a poet. Her love for nature. They lived happily in a single room. And then one day, the girl poet said to the boy poet, we are going to have another poet in the family. But this boy was never born. Because the girl died and the young poet died with her inside her. That means she was carrying a child. She was expecting a baby. This was the new poet coming to their house. They must have been so happy. And yet, before delivering the baby, maybe some complications. And both the mother and the baby died. The baby died within the mother, in the mother's womb. So can you imagine what a tragic blow it must have been for the boy poet? Or rather he is our B Wordsworth. He doesn't acknowledge it. But yes, he's the man. And the girl's husband was very sad. And he said he would never touch a thing in the girl's garden. And so the garden remained and grew high and wild. Yeah, so he gives the reason why. Because the boy had asked, now why do you keep so many bushes? It makes the place damp. So this is what he said. That means he is the boy, a young man. And it is his wife who died along with the child. That is why he doesn't touch the garden which she loved so much in her memory. I looked at B. Wordsworth and he, as he told me this lovely story, he seemed to grow older. Yeah, it is because of the pain while telling the story. I understood his story. We went for long walks together. We went to the botanical gardens and the rock gardens. We climbed Chancellor Hill in the late afternoon and watched the darkness fall on Port of Spain and watched the lights go on in the city and on the ships in the harbor. So yes, he has quite a nice time with this man. He did everything as though he were doing it for the first time in his life. So there was 
a very novel way uh, there was something uh, very unique about him whatever he would do he would always try to make it very special as if he is he was doing it for the first time it always happens when you do something for the first time there is an excitement so he whenever he did anything he showed as a lot of excitement as if this was for the first time he was doing it he did everything as though he were doing some church rite as if he has something very holy something very important he would say to me now how about having some ice cream and when i said yes he would grow very serious and say now which cafe shall we patronize as though it were a very important thing yeah, if we do that oh we'll go to any blasted place where which we have visited earlier and go no he'll try to make it important some people know how to make a thing interesting and this man was like that he would think for some time about it and finally say i think i will go and negotiate the purpose with, uh, purchase with that shop the world became a most exciting place one day when i was in his yard he said to me i have a great secret which i am now going to tell you i said it really secret so he is asking is it really a secret at the moment yes i looked at him and he looked at me he said this is just between you and me remember i'm writing a poem so what's so special he's a poet he might write a poem so what's the secret oh i was disappointed because he had expected something very interesting and no he says i'm writing a poem are he is a poet so it's very natural that he might write a poem there is nothing very uh, secret what should there, there be something secret about it he said so he understands the disappointment so he says but this is a different sort of poem this is the greatest poem in the world i told you he has a love for superlatives he is the greatest poet his uh, garden has the best mangoes in the port of spain and the poem he is writing is the great will be the greatest poem in the world i whistle now he gets excited he said i've been working on it for more than 5 years now wow so as if he is writing an epic Five years and just see his progress. I will finish it in about twenty-two years from now. That means twenty-two plus five. It will take him twenty-seven years to complete. So we must be wondering whether he is writing Ramayana or Mahabharat or Homer's Iliad. What? No, nothing. That is, if I keep on writing at the present rate, at this rate in which I am pro progressing, if I write in this rate, then I'll finish it in twenty-two years. You does write a lot then, so you must be writing a lot then. He said, "Not any more. I just write one line a month, but I make sure it is a good line. One line a month. That means in one year he writes twelve lines." that means up till now 5 into 12 we must have written only 60 line and 12 into 27 multiply and see i asked what was the last month's good line he looked up at the sky and said the past is deep yes the past is deep it torments him a lot the past the girl poet the baby poet they never gave him company the girl poet died along with the baby poet who was never born so the past is deep i said it is a beautiful line we was was said i hope to distill the experiences of a whole month into that single line of poetry it might be just one line but i try to put put all the experiences of one month in that one line so in 22 years I shall have written a poem that will sing to all humanity. I was filled with wonder. So yes, he seems quite impressed. Our walks continued. We walked along the sea wall at dock site one day, and I said, "Mr. Wordsworth, if I drop this pin in the water, you think it will float?" 
So what will we say if we were approached with the same question? We would say, of course not. It will sing. But what does he say? Just see, he, may, he has the knack of making things interesting. So what does he say? He said, this is a strange world. Drop your pin and let us see what happens. Yeah, let us experiment. The pin sang. I said, how is the poem this month? So that means one month has elapsed. But he never told me any other line. He merely said, oh, you come soon. It comes, you know, it comes. So, yes, it comes. The lines, they come. And unless they come, I can't write it. Inspiration. Or we would sit on the seawall and watch the liners come into the harbor. Yeah, the, coming to anchor in the harbor. But of the greatest poem in the world, I heard no more. I felt he was growing older. How you does live, Mr. Wordsworth? I asked him one day. So what is your means of livelihood? Because he doesn't see him doing any work really. He said, you mean how I get money? How I earn my living? When I nodded, he laughed in a crooked way. He said, I sing calypsos in the calyp calypso season. So calypso season is at a particular time. It's not all through the year. Like you have the carnivals in Goa. You don't have it all through the year. There is a particular time for it. Same. And that lasts you the rest of the year. So during Calypso season, you sing Calypso. You earn money. So does it last you all through the year? It is enough. But you will be the richest man in the world when you write the greatest poem. He didn't reply. That means he's not right progressing with the poem or continuing with the poem anymore. One day when I went to see him in his little house, I found him lying on his little bed. So he's not well, he's ill. He looked so old and so weak that I found myself wanting to cry. Why? Because this boy considers B. Wordsworth as his friend. He has developed a strange bond with this man. And when he sees him lying in this condition, he really feels very emotional. He said, the poem is not go going well. He wasn't looking at me. He was looking through the window at the coconut tree and he was speaking as though I wasn't there. He's speaking to the, um, to the narrator, but he's not looking at him. He's looking in the distance. He said, when I was 20, I felt the power within myself. That time I was young. I felt I could do a lot. Then almost in front of my eyes, I could see his face growing older and more tired. He said, but that, that was a long time ago. And then I felt it so keenly. It was as though I had been slapped by my mother. So this realization dawns on him like a blow on his face as if his mother had slapped him. I could see it clearly on his face. What? The signs of impending death. It was there for everyone to see. Death on the shrinking face. So he is dying. He looked at me and saw my tears and sat up. So he realizes this boy has become very emotional. He's sad. He's crying. So what does he say? He said, come. So he calls the boy. I went and sat on his knees. He looked into my eyes and he said, oh, you can see it too. So you can see the death signs on my face. I always knew you had the poet's eye. Yeah, you have the poet's eye, a keen insight. And that is what makes you see what is written in my face. The signs of approaching death. He didn't even look sad and that made me burst out crying loudly. He pulled me to his thin chest and said, do you want me to tell you a funny story? And he smiled encouragingly at me. But I couldn't reply. Why? His voice was choked. He was full of tears and they were stopping him from speaking. 
He said, when I have finished this story, I want you to promise that you will go away and never come back to see me. Do you promise? I nodded. He said, good. Well, listen, that story I told you about the boy poet and the girl poet. Do you remember that? That wasn't true. It was something I just made up. No, he's telling a lie. All this talk about poetry and the greatest poem in the world, that wasn't true either. Isn't that the funniest thing you have heard? So he wants all the memories of his acquaintance to be erased from the narrator's mind. So he keeps telling, oh, that story was false. The story about the poem is false. And next he is, so isn't that the funniest thing? But his voice broke. That means he's telling a lie. When he speaks it out, his voice becomes emotional. His voice broke. Why? Because he wants that all the memories should be wiped away from the mind of the boy. So he tells, you won't come to visit me again. Promise. Why? Because he doesn't see that, want that the boy should see him uh, proceeding towards death every day. Because he has seen in the one particular day when he realizes that B. Wordsworth is on the verge of dying. What a, an emotional setback it has been for him. So if he comes every day, he will be experiencing the same pain. And that is what B. Wordsworth doesn't want. It's a small boy. He doesn't want him to have this pain, bear this pain. So that is why he has made him promise you won't come back again. So boy can, can't do anything. He has promised. So he keeps the promise. I left the house and ran home crying like a poet for everything I saw. Poets, they cry. He had said, no, B. Wordsworth. I walked along Alberto Street a year later, but I could find no sign of the poet's house. So the poet's house has, has vanished, melted into thin air along with the poet. It had vanished just like that. It had been pulled down and a big two-story building had taken its place. Yeah, so once he dies, the house pulled down with all those trees and bushes and everything. It had been a wild place. So, it has been pulled down and a two-story department has come there. The mango tree and the plum tree and the coconut tree had all been cut down and there was brick and concrete everywhere, nothing of nature. It was so, it is now a concrete jungle instead of the um, nature's jungle, the wild jungle. The nature, instead of the nature's jungle, it is now a concrete jungle. Brick and concrete everywhere. It was just as though B. Wordsworth had never existed. <sighs> so isn't it a nice story? I'm sure you must have liked it. I always do. I've taught it so many times, but I always like it. So as I said, there are chances. You never know. This time it will be a bit different. So what are the things you should uh, give importance to while preparing your answers? So, I told you that while preparing your answers, the things which you have to keep in mind is always when it is a poet, poem, it is uh, about the poet, when it is a prose about the author. And remember, you need some quoting lines. You need some lines to quote. Otherwise, you are not going to get marks. Let me tell you this. Whether it is poem or uh, The Tempest or this one. And uh, prose is difficult to quote. Why? Because the remembering lengthy, lengthy lines, poems are easy. But you can do one thing. I always suggest my students, instead of quoting means that they have to be exact as in written by the author. So the punctuations also should be exact. So in that case, since it is difficult, what do you do? Uh, you can pick up phrases group of words, not a full sentence, which are sort of keywords, you can use those quotations, which are very important in the context of that portion where you are writing. So you can pick up some keywords, remember them with the punctuations, and then you underline while you are writing, they are your quotations. So, 
Yes, your characters are also important and the setting is in Trinidad. So why? Because this setting is important because it tells you about the, these people, the lifestyle and everything. And uh, yes, so what are the points? First, P. Wordsworth comes to visit this boy's house. Then he catches the boy while returning from school and takes him to his house to give him a treat of mangoes. And then uh, the mother beats the boy black and blue. So he again runs away to the poet's house. Poet takes him for an outing and takes makes effort to see that he his anger is reduced he forgets his anger and then he tells about his love story but he doesn't acknowledge that it is his but the way in which he says it is obvious and then he tells him one day he tells him about the poem which he thinks will be the greatest poem and he keeps on writing one line a month and in this way he hopes to finish it in 22 years but after that, when he meets the next time, he doesn't talk about it. And the narrator realizes that this man is becoming as if older. He is uh, coming close to his death, the signs of death written on, on his face. And then he feels very sad. He wants, he starts crying. So B. Wordsworth realizes that this boy is very emotional. And he cannot bear this loss. So he tells him, I'll tell you a funny story and then you'll promise not to come back to me. Hmm. And the boy promises. And then he tells this story is a false one. The poem is a false one. I told you all lies. Why does he say all this? Because he wants to uh, uh, wipe out all the memories of himself from the boy's mind. And the boy feels very sad, but he keeps his promise and doesn't visit the poet anymore. And one year later, when he passes, he sees, sees that the house is not there. It had been pulled down and a two-story apartment had taken its place. So, the concrete jungle instead of the nature, instead of nature's jungle. So, quite an interesting story, especially the language or the English used by the narrator and his mother. They are really lovely. So the characters in this story is quite an important one. And also, because there are three characters, the boy, his mother and the poet, B. Wordsworth. So the title is very appropriate. You will need to focus a little on the title, very appropriate, B. Wordsworth. Why? Because when you get a title of this sort, naturally you would want to know who is B. Wordsworth. We know William Wordsworth, but who is this B. Wordsworth? So, and then yes, we come to know that he is also a poet. But his B is for black and he has a brother called W. Wordsworth. So B. Wordsworth title is very appropriate because he is a very important character. Rather, he's the main protagonist and narrator shares the screen with him. So, what is his mystery? Why does he lead a lonely life? So, and then, there can be questions like, who was B. Wordsworth? You have those three section questions, the lengthy ones only. Six, six, eight, I guess. So, who was B. Wordsworth? What made him to befriend the boy? How did their friendship grow and get snapped? What in their friendship appeals to you most and why? So this is a very comprehensive one. More or less the whole story will be included. And then as I said quoting. So I said you really think I is a poet? You are as good as me. So this is how he makes his way into the narrator's heart. And their friendship, it is so important. So what do you think of B. Wordsworth in the story? Is he really a tram? So B. Wordsworth, he is a sensitive, emotional and sincere person. Actually, he is a failed poet. 
so he keeps on going from house to house selling his poems which no one would buy but he doesn't matter it doesn't matter and he doesn't mind but he tells lies why for the good of the boy why in the end the lies which he tells they are good for the boy why because he doesn't want the boy to live with these sad memories that is why he says you know what those were all lies so then is the in the story b wordsworth naipal contrast two modes of life what are the two modes hmm. one is the sentimental and poetic b wordsworth another is the harsh and realistic his mother the narrator's mother sentimental or poetic represented by two not only b wordsworth but by the boy also he is so emotional and harsh and realistic by the boy's mother and another question is comment upon the ending of the story it is is it satisfying or not why or why not so what are the points to be dealt in this question the death of the poet is not the real end the boy's visit to the dead poet's house significant no actually he doesn't visit the dead poet's house he visits he passes through that road and then he sees what has happened to the house and so the fast changing world it crushes nature and concrete jungle springs up in place of nature and the house of the poet pulled down no place for sentiment mentality no place for romanticism the hard world so the soft dreams of the poet who dies and along with it his house also it dies its death so it is buried or pulled down and then a very materialistic and hard thing crops up in its place yes and the ending is satisfactory yes because uh, it doesn't end abruptly there is a conclusion the death was seen on his face and yes one year later so the poet has died and before uh, he died, before this he doesn't want the boy to face this unpleasant situation of seeing him approaching his death every day so he tells the story deliberate lie that the story which i told you was something very uh, it was not true so you can handle these and the main theme of the story so main theme could be poetry is of no value in the modern world this is a materialistic world so and so naturally poet poets their profession is not a very profitable prof profession because he says now nah, he goes and from house to house and no one buys it but he doesn't matter he doesn't mind so poets as if they are a misfit in today's harsh materialistic world so he is a loner and b wordsworth yes as a poet he has failed so what is his mean of a means of livelihood he sings calypsos during calypso season and that sustains it so is denial as being a poet yes denial of a frustrated person frustrated in love frustrated in his poems in his uh, profession so these could be the main themes and you'll have to hard work so i think it is enough and next time i will start the sound machine which will take two classes so you can wait for me and for the time being let me bid you a uh, goodbye it is 2 o'clock at night so quite late anyway so i won't delay any more and one thing i must tell you stay safe don't go out of your house bye